Hi Founder fans, Jason here. Today's founder is Dr. Benjamin Rush, the father of American psychiatry and a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Now, Dr. Rush was important to many facets of early American culture, so I'm going to do his video a little different today. First, I'm going to run through chronologically his revolutionary credits as an American founder, and then I'm going to double back and discuss some of the parts of his ideology that were really important to developing America as a whole. So. Starting from the beginning, uh, Dr. Benjamin Rush was a young man when the revolution broke out, but he was already uh, an important physician, an important essayist, and an important member of the College of Philadelphia, now known as the University of Pennsylvania, where he taught chemistry, an important subject then as now. Uh, he's elected pretty early on to the Continental Congress, where he votes for and then signs the Declaration of Independence. During this time, he's then appointed as a Surgeon General for the Continental Army. Now, not he's not the Surgeon General. He's a Surgeon General for the middle department of the Continental Army. But still, he is in charge of a whole lot of wounded soldiers, hospitals, uh, military aid supplies, a really important member, except he gets caught up in what I like to call the Continental Hospital rivalry between John Morgan and... Dr. John Morgan and Dr. William Shippen Jr. Uh, those two men would be the second and third Surgeon Generals of the United States, respectively, except they would fight with each other. Their rivalry was long-standing. Benjamin Rush takes John Morgan's side in the rivalry, but Morgan is ousted. Shippen is in. Rush then has a lot of conflict with Shippen, and about a year later, he re Rush resigns his position. Now, he's still an important founder. After the war ends, he's gigantic when it comes to medicine in Philadelphia, and he is elected to the ratification convention for Pennsylvania for the United States Constitution. And Dr. Rush does, in fact, support the Constitution and votes to ratify it. And Pennsylvania is famously one of the first to do so in that early race to be the first to ratify, though Delaware does get there first. Uh, he then goes and about, about a decade later is appointed by President John Adams as treasurer of the U.S. Mint. Uh, and a really important position, not a treasurer of the United States. He's overseeing the money in the part of the government that actually literally makes money. Uh, he does this pretty well, and he was fairly unbiased. Uh, so he continues in that position from the Adams administration through the Jefferson administration to the James Madison administration. And it's about that time he resigns from the position, and it's about that time that he rekindles an old friendship. You see, Rush, being there when the Declaration was signed, was friendly with both Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. And though Jefferson and Adams had a falling out when Jefferson replaced Johnny as president, about 12 years later, the two finally start corresponding again, and that is largely due to the intervention of Dr. Rush. He's the one who recommends to Adams and Jefferson that they start talking again, and they do. And their correspondence at the later part of their lives, after they're both president and retired, uh, it's an invaluable resource to historians to review what was being said, what the ideas that these two monumental founders were thinking as the revolution came to a close. And we have Benny Rush to thank for that. Now, and after that, Rush goes back and is a physician, and that's how he spends the, his later years. But as I said, I want to double back and talk about a few things Rush was pretty advanced on. Uh, first of all, abolition. He was one of the early abolitionists in the future United States and early United States. And in fact, he was a major player in Pennsylvania, being the first to abolish slavery in its state in 1780. Almost called it a colony there, but not in 1780. Uh, now, Rush... He was an abolitionist. He was one of the early members of the Pennsylvania Abolition Society, which not only encouraged abolition in Pennsylvania, but throughout the young United States. Uh, he believed that the color of a person's skin had nothing to do with their intelligence or that it made them inferior. He actually suggested that it was a lack of education and people being held in slavery itself that affected the intelligence of black people at the time, which is a fairly fair argument. If they, these human beings were given an education, maybe they would be a little smarter. Imagine that. Uh, unfortunately, not all of Russia's views on black people were that forward-thinking. 
he now he was always on the forefront of scientific theories. He was always trying to learn more and explain the world around him, uh, which is, I guess, a justification for what I'm about to say. But I really shouldn't say that because, well, Rush thought that people's skin became darker due to a disease that could be cured and make them white again. Now, obviously, I don't agree with this. And at the time, he this was they were trying to explain why people were different, and Rush was doing his best to try and make people equal. Though, of course, today we look at this idea as backwards and not very thoughtful. Um, as I said, I am not trying to apologize for these ideas, um, but he was attempting to find a way to help black people become liberated. He just did it wrong. That being said, uh, he did a few other things not super great. He was, again, a very uh, important physician in his day. Uh, however, Dr. Benjamin Rush continued to practice what's called heroic medicine. Now, there's not much heroic about it. It's actually fairly old school. Uh, he pushed for things like bloodletting, and to when people were sick to induce vomiting, and to induce sweating. He thought these were natural, familiar cures that should work. Even in his day, these types of things were starting to be a little passe. You know, we know that George Washington, at the end of his life, had some bloodletting, and there were people who strongly disagreed with that idea, even at the time. Though Benjamin Rush was very much in favor in many, many situations where we would now look back and say, no, that's obviously the wrong place to do it. Now, before you get angry at me for criticizing Dr. Rush too much, uh, I'll move on to what he did that was really important. Uh, first, prisons. Dr. Rush helped create the Walnut Street Prison in Philadelphia, which is one of the first modern prisons. Uh, he was an early person to protest capital punishment. He thought that was cruel. Uh, and he also thought public humiliation was unproductive. Uh, it, it didn't help people to embarrass them. It would only further radicalize them, in his opinion. Uh, so when he opened his penitentiary, the idea was people should just be sentenced to prison as a punishment. And you stay in prison and serve your duty to society, and then hopefully when you get out, you have been remedied, and you'll be able to go about your life. Uh, and and he really, he wasn't really looking at it the way we look at it today, where you you serve your debt to society, you can be remedied, and then you're all cured, come back to society. Uh, it was put them in prison for a long time is the best way to handle it. That is pretty much how we operate today, though. So, whether you agree with how prisons operate or not today, uh, Dr. Benjamin Rush has a lot to do with our modern system. Now, Rush is most known for what it says next to me. Psychiatry. And this is probably where he really excelled the most in our modern eyes, where he really was closer to the way we think today than his contemporaries thought. He looked at mental illness as a disease. And he was one of the first people in the world to do so. There were other contemporaries of his that started to think the same way. Again, he's operating at what I call the peak of the Enlightenment. The Declaration of Independence. This is when the Enlightenment is as enlightened as it's going to get as the Industrial Revolution sets in. And Dr. Rush, he viewed himself as an enlightened person. And that's why he saw mental illness as illnesses that needed to be treated, if not cured. Uh, he studied very different methods of treatment. I will side note, and I've talked to what seems like a lot of trash about uh, Rush today. Uh, some of his treatments for mental illness were pretty intense and would probably be considered cruel and unusual today. Uh, but again, he was trying to find ways in the world he lived in to fix problems that he saw in front of him. The one thing he also viewed, and this is interesting, is alcoholism. He is one of the first people to say to to consider alcoholism a disease, uh, and his he said that the alcohol was in control of the person, not the other way around. And the best way to treat alcoholism would be to slowly wean the patient off of their addiction by giving them less and less and less alcohol until there was no more being consumed, as opposed to cutting them off cold turkey, which can do serious damage to the human body if you've really developed a habit of that nature. And, and really, that is the peak of where Dr. Benjamin Rush really matches 
the way we view something today. That being said, Benjamin Rush is considered the father of American psychiatry, and even his image is on the logo of the American Psychiatric Association. Now, say what you will about psych uh, psychiatrists. Uh, some people call them shrinks. I don't, but either way, uh, they are a, a medical profession, and Dr. Benjamin Rush is the first one in American history to start that profession. So, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Hope you didn't get offended by what I said. If you're a psychiatrist, I certainly mean no offense. Um, I, but if you are a psychiatrist, you probably know that there are some people out there who don't necessarily love your job. But again, I'm not one of them. I'm unbiased on this channel. Thank you for watching. That's uh, just a little bit of Dr. Benjamin Rush. It's 10 minutes of Benjamin Rush, but I could probably go on for hours and hours, and I'm trying to squeeze it in as much as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like. That would be the best thing in the world for me. And if you're new here, subscribe, because I put out videos about the American Revolution and different American founders seven days a week. I'll be back, for example, with another founder for you tomorrow.